It was 100 years ago this month that Albert Einstein first unveiled his general theory of relativity. And uh, scientists have been working on, on verifying some of the aspects of this. And one of the most exciting ones that I think will be published in the next year uh, with a paper that I'll be an author on and will probably win a Nobel Prize for is <laughs> <laughs> the detection of rotational waves. Um, in 2002, I moved to Pasadena and I worked at the Jet Propulsion Lab, uh, one of NASA's centres, working on the LISA mission. LISA is trying to detect these gravitational waves, and it does so by having three spacecraft. It puts five million kilometres apart. It shoots laser beams between them, and it tries to measure changes in the separation of those spacecraft to about a tenth of the diameter of a hydrogen atom. So it's a pretty hard problem. Um, it was my job to figure out how to make that measurement as the interferometer architect. And now, uh, in two weeks' time, we're launching LISA Pathfinder, a 600 million euro mission, which will launch from French Guiana on December 2nd, weather permitting. Uh, that will test some of the critical technologies for LISA. A little bit closer to home, we have the GRACE follow-on mission that when I came back to the ANU in 2011, I led the Australian team with CSIRO, ANU, uh, the National Measurement Institute to take this LISA technology and apply it to measuring the Earth's gravitational field. And the reason we want to do this is because we can measure how it changes very precisely. We can map how mass moves around the Earth. And at the risk of Larry Marshall throwing a brochure at me, this is to tell us about water. <laughs> we, have, we can make maps of groundwater in the Murray-Darling Basin, and we can also globally map the melting of polar ice and ice in Greenland. Um, and we produce maps like this of the, of the Earth that we see here. Um, the, two, the, the key technology that underlies both these measurements is a really advanced digital signal processing algorithms and technology, and it's enabled by a new chip called a Field Programmable Gate Array, or an FPGA. And this FPGA has two properties that we're really interested in. One is it's incredibly powerful. It can do, unlike CPUs, which might be able to do four or eight or 16 uh, processes at the same time, it can do thousands or even millions of operations in a single clock cycle. The second thing is it can be reconfigured in a matter of a few seconds to completely rewire the internal of the chip to perform an entirely different function. So when GRACE ended, uh, and we, we are now uh, have sent the hardware off to Germany to be integrated with the spacecraft, ready for its launch in 2017, I had this great team of talented people here at the ANU with nothing to do. And they could go overseas and work for international space agencies, or we could try and look at the technology that we had here and try and do something with it. And that's what we decided to do. So we didn't have to look too far. Um, in our lab, we, we have a whole bunch of uh, equipment like this, which we, is loosely called test and measurement equipment, or test and measurement devices. And it's an $80 billion annual market of these devices sold around the world. And it typically looks like this. So you can see these big boxes with dials and displays and cables. Our, our end user is uh, typically a male from 25 to 35 with at least one item of facial hair. And we want to replace <laughs> all of this with the FPGA chip. And so this is our mantra. One device replaces multiple instruments at a fraction of the cost. Um, just for those of you in the know, these are the sort of instruments we're talking about. So there's a whole list here where we might have 20 or 50 instruments that we believe our device can one day replace. And they all cost around about $5,000. So that's where we're pitching our, our price point at, at our device. Basically having it cost the same as one of these, but eventually have it grow to perform all of these devices. Um, so this is a slide I actually gave about a year and a half ago when we first had this idea and we started working on it. And there's actually two parts to it. The first part is the FPGA technology that I've already talked about. But the second part is a mobile touch interface display, which gives a drastically improved user experience compared to the, the state of the art, which is really 30 years old and hasn't really changed much in that time. Um, now, a year later, I'm happy to say that this is where we are. We now have our device. Uh, we finished it. And um, here it is right here. Um, you can buy it now. Uh, it's $4,990. It's available online. We've sold them to NASA, uh, to the US. We, it comes with a free iPad. Um, and actually, we, we, sold a, we sold one to Apple last week. And so we have the distinction of selling an iPad to Apple in our first <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right now, we have four instruments. Uh, we have an oscilloscope, a waveform generator, a spectrum analyzer, and a phase meter. But the business model is that we can, now the hardware's out there, we can just keep on writing these instruments. In fact, it's getting easier as time goes on as we have more and more of our intellectual property all worked out. And what will happen is, one morning you'll wake up, you'll have a little uh, app icon saying there's an update available, you'll hit update, and you'll get a new instrument for free. It's like Christmas for scientists. <laughs> um, we also have an app, it's available in the App Store, and you can see it's a very pretty looking app. To really appreciate just how different it is, you'd have to have subjected yourself to years of, of ordinary equipment. But one of the nice things, it's cloud enabled, which allows the workflow to be drastically improved. 
We've got pretty lofty goals, 500k in the first year, 5 million and then 50 million, obviously going by a factor of 10 every year for the next 30 years. <laughs> and right now we've just hit $100,000 worth of revenue after launching our product last month. So it's looking great, we're interested in pushing into the education market and industry, and then maybe one day having our technology find its way back into space applications. And here is the astronaut version of, of our Moku Lab ready to launch on the Grace following mission. Thank you.